August 21st. That's when a total solar eclipse will grace the sky. August 21st, the Great American Eclipse. First total solar eclipse in recent memory. in South Carolina. It'll be the first total solar eclipse in 99 years to cross the lower 48 states from coast to coast. We know that 14 states are going to be in the direct path of the total eclipse. Now, across the country, that is a lot of land to cover. And what we understand is it represents about 200 million people that are within one day's drive of getting to within the direct path. While most every American will see this eclipse, only a small area will see it entirely. 32,000 people call Hopkinsville home, but come August, 100,000 people will travel to Eclipseville for a once in a lifetime experience. Daytime darkness is coming. For the first time in 99 years, a total eclipse will cross coast to coast. It'll run right over this town, and they've even painted a line to show its exact path. The eclipse will race from Oregon to South Carolina at about 1,500 miles per hour, covering a swath roughly 70 miles wide. Day will turn into night and the temperatures will drop as much as 25 degrees.
Let's go to the Word of God concerning the... the this is uh, Watchman of the Harvest. I know uh, for a lot of you this is uh, the first time you're hearing my voice. Uh, I'll apologize right off. I, uh, I really... My voice is really groggy. I've had a week of... Uh, really working with the Lord on uh, what I'm about to present. Uh, many saw, you know, from the video title that, uh, you know, 100% proof that the Revelation 12 sign does, in fact, happen in August. And that's what we're going to present here. Uh, first, I'd like to start off and uh, speak on the three visions I have been given over the course of my life. Uh, the first one being uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, this is the same vision really that called me into the work that I'm doing here on this channel. Uh, in the vision, uh, it starts out uh, in a rural area. Me my, uh, and a group of people are outside and uh, it's daylight. Uh, everybody's having a good time. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, the uh, day becomes night, and I look up, and I see uh, what I understand now is the eclipse. I see the uh, the moon moving across the sun, and there's a sound. Uh, you know, I can recall seeing something falling. But at this point, I, I looked across the horizon, you know, it is dark now, and I see darkness, you know, coming across the horizon, you know, covering everything uh, in the sky and below. And I, I turn and, and point for everybody that's around me to get into the barn, you know, that's back behind us, about uh, 30 yards. So uh, we all rush, we get into the barn close the doors and uh, you know I spend that time period in there just going around and comforting the people in the barn it, it was as if I was the only one that understood what was happening and uh, we could hear you know winds going across the top of the barn I mean uh, it, it sounded like a tornado you know a great storm uh, the second vision I had happened on 623 of 17 and this is the same time period where many of us were noticing that uh, there had been a time shift you know a 30 day shift in time you know our calendars uh, you know what uh, was happening you know then you know we understood it that uh, you know it kind of set back 30 days Diane Alivieri done some good work on this um, in the dream I was it's kind of odd to talk about now but I was actually making this video that I'm making right now and uh, of course I didn't know that then and as the dream ended all, all I could recall I was told to remember two three four and many of you on the channel uh, know that uh, you know at that time I had uh, put out uh, five video series you know this is your your final wake-up call and I had explained that uh, 234 would be my last video and that's really what I understood from the vision at the time uh, what I didn't understand is uh, he wasn't telling me to stop he was telling me to take a break as he was gonna gonna need uh, all of my energy my clarity he's gonna need all of my attention in the work that he has me doing right here on this video and this has been going on over you know course of a few weeks but really uh, solid here about the last week and a half in the, my third vision third and final uh, happened on 7-4 of 17, the 4th of July. And uh, 
it, it was a strange vision to me. I, I walked in uh, to an RV, you know, just a motorhome. You know, my dad had uh, actually bought one just before he passed about four years ago. And as I walk in, I see my dad straight across from me. And uh, he was beat up. You know, he had the same wounds uh, that uh, Christ had. And uh, I got to tell you, it, it, this this vision really affected me. Uh, you know, he, he was probably, my dad was probably the closest person, uh, you know, I was closer to him in life than, than anybody. So seeing him uh, was quite shocking, but then to see him beat up, and, uh, you know, I went to him and asking him, you know, who did this to you, Dad? And he pointed, and I looked over to my left, and it was my brother. His name's Michael, my brother, in real life. And he stood up, and he was uh, coming towards us. And I grabbed him, you know, I attacked him. And I, I couldn't understand that for the life of me. Uh, I'll be able to explain it more as I present some material here. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. And I have a little cheat sheet here. Uh, this is the first time I've, I've done the screen share and talking. So uh, ahead of time, you know, please overlook the, uh, the mistakes. What, uh, so we're basically right here. Uh, Richie from Boston has a uh, video. It was posted on September 1st, 2016. And the video is titled, NASA Sun Simulator Caught on Video. Uh, what I want to explain, uh, you know, and what I feel you're really seeing here, is uh, not... A sun simulator you're seeing a devices uh, you know it's basically a mirror device you know that is being placed near the Sun and the moon you know a lot of people right now are seeing uh, two suns you know a lot of people are attributing this to planet X and uh, different things that's not the case you know if you had a mirror in front of the Sun what uh, what happens when light, you know, how you can bend light with a mirror, I guess would be a better way to say it. Uh, you can direct it elsewhere, right? And that would give you the, the impression that uh, there's two, you know, suns. It's a reflection. And off of the firmament as well. All this, you know, comes into, a, comes into play here. I'm going to play this video for you real quick. I'll mute the sound so I can kind of explain and uh, uh, give you an idea of what you're seeing. All right, it's already muted. This right here is the, the moon. And as you can see, there's this ball right here up near the moon. This is a, a real video. This is why the moon and the sun you know, doesn't uh, seem the same, you know, now. Uh, if, you, if you've really looked at it, or, you know, the sun used to be yellow. I look at the sun now, it's white. Uh, last night I looked at the moon. Uh, when it was coming up, it was red. It was a, a blood-type moon. And then it uh, was yellow. And then as it got all the way up, it was white. Now we're looking at the uh, the sun. And this little dot here, is a device. In my opinion, it is a mirror pointed back towards the sun. See how you can see the kind of reflection down? Uh, he's going to turn away, and when he turns back here, he'll turn away one more time on this video. When he turns back, he's going to be able to zoom in on this device that's right in front of the sun. Give it a few seconds. There it is. Strange, right? 
it's a pretty amazing capture on this video that uh, Richie from Boston presented. By all means, go to uh, you know his channel, and he's uh, uh, doing you know, and it's on the uh, Sun Simulator, and uh, you know he's showing you that uh, NASA has uh, the patent for this, so you know it is real. Uh, so back to you know that third vision, you know it happened on seven four seventeen. What's interesting is you know I, on eight four seventeen I was watching this video by Zeus Mossbender YouTube channel. This guy, uh, he's got quite the personality. I think you would enjoy his videos. But his video was posted on July 28, 2017. And the title of the video is Kill Shot. And what he is explaining is what happened on 7-23-17. In the sun, there was a mass coronal ejection towards Mars. What a lot of people don't understand is, is Mars represents Michael, the Archangel. I know I totally just messed that up. Alright, bear with me. And I'll show you that. I got it highlighted here for you. Mars represents Michael, the protector of Israel. And you really kind of need to know a few things here as far as what represents what, so you'll understand the presentation. If you look, as well, Mercury represents Gabriel and his trumpet. The sun is associated with Abba Father and with Christ. The moon is symbolic of the bride, the body of Christ. Now, basically, you know what they're saying, and this is an old, uh, you know, this, I think this thing here was posted in uh, the 29th of November, 2012. Any total solar eclipse or lunar is basically seen from Earth like a combination, a union of a celestial wedding of sun and moon. Does this represent the soon wedding of the ages of Messiah, Christ, with his bride? So we're going to go to this next video. And uh, as we were talking about, there, you know, on... Uh, eight four, I've seen this video by Zeus Mossbender. And he's talking about this you know, coronal mass ejection that happened and shot out towards Mars. I'm going to show you that video real quick so you can get an idea. Let's go over to Stellarium and see something very, very interesting. <laughs> As I speak, my friends, it is the 25th of July. Let's turn off the atmosphere and take a look at this. What do you see? There's Mars right there above the sun. It's actually conjoined with the sun right about now, people. Mars, the wandering star that is representative of Michael, the warrior messenger. Now let's watch the zoom in again in light of a particular passage of scripture. You ready? At that time, Michael shall what? Stand up. Look at that. You looking at that? I'm looking at that. You can't fake that. You can't fake that, CNN. Going on. The great prince who stands watch. Stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time and at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who was found written in the book. Oh, Daniel, 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 chapter 12, verse 1, man, oh man, Michael shall stand up, there he is, watching over the sun, <laughs> man, is this, is this something, this is amazing, and now for the crux of this here biscuit, do you know what happened two days ago, as I said, it's the 25th of July, 
I don't know if it's still going to be the 25th when this video goes up online, but right now it's the 25th. When the 23rd, something happened. Anybody know what it was? How about I let Ben tell you? Good morning, folks. Whatever deity or luck or chance you live by, thank you. A solar kill shot just left the far side of the sun, and it is as scary looking as it is thankfully aimed far away from our planet. The eruption was titanic, and as I mentioned, luckily not coming this way. Stereo A looks at the back of the sun from our perspective, and so that blast heading out left is directly pointed away from our planet from that satellite's perspective. The CME appeared to come out in at least two clouds, with the second being a tremendous eruption that would have me sending you to the store for supplies if it was coming this way. Alas, it isn't, but it is a second CME coupling concern, and that one is less than two days from 1AU. It is heading right at Mars, so our satellites there could glitch this week as well, but that Mars alignment with the Sun combines with Venus, the Earth, and Saturn in a line, We've got a lot of cladney plate type resonance and electrical energy from CMEs in the inner solar system. Earth. All right, I, I'm going to pause that. Uh, it kind of points back, you know, if you remember my my third vision on seven four seventeen. The one part I left out, I guess I forgot to mention. What I was told as I was waking up or coming out of this vision is he has to defeat Satan. That's what I heard as I was coming out of the vision. If you can recall, I told you uh, when I came into this RV or stepped up in it, you know, my dad was straight ahead. Uh, my brother Michael was to the left. And as you just heard, uh, the mass coronal ejection shot out to the left towards Mars which represents Michael so uh, I was not only representative I guess in the, in the vision as the Sun S-O-N I was also the S-U-N the Sun because I attacked Michael and uh, let me go over to Stellarium. I'm going to have to uh, load it up here to be able to show you all of that happening in real time. Just takes a second here. Get the settings right. We're going to put it on the 25th of July. Having a tough time getting it aligned. Here we go. Now you see the sun, and you can see the date here, and it's July, sorry, 25th. I need to pause it so we don't get out of our time frame here. As you can see, the, the sun is right here, and Mars, you can see the word Mars here, is right to the left. Now pay close attention. Let's go back to the 23rd. Now, on the 23rd, you have the Sun, which represents Christ. You have Mars, that represents Michael. And you have the Moon here, that represents the Bride, in Cancer. This is on 723. Cancer signifies, or what it's known as, is the Gathering. So what you're going to see here as I move up to the 24th, and I'm going to take us all the way down to the eclipse on 821. When I move up on the 24th, you're going to see Michael move. and He's going to come towards the sun. He's moving out of the way of that mass coronal ejection. 
then you're going to see him stand up and the sun's going to start dropping down and he's going to spin around and he's going to stand up above the sun above Christ standing guard so here we are on the 24th see he moved in on the 25th he moves back out and now as we go down 26th and you can see too make note that Mercury is here which represents Gabriel and his horn the moon and Gabriel are in Leo which is the, the king star on the 725 so as we move forward you can see Michael coming around to stand up above the Sun but he actually stood up on 725 here we are on 810 811 812 13 17, 18, 19, and we know what happens on the 21st, the eclipse. So you have the sun and the moon, which is Christ and the bride, and Leo, the king star. You still have Michael right here, standing guard. Right here, you still have Gabriel and his horn. I'm going to come back to this. Let's see if I can downsize this. Sorry. Back to the cheat sheet. It's interesting to note, because I'm going to show you later where, where the war in heaven start today I'll actually show this in a second video it's where I'm going to cut off on this video uh, this video is focusing right now on the uh, the bride and the uh, Revelation 12 sign so uh, on 725 is when Michael stood up 33 days before he goes to war with Satan and heaven Mars is also affiliated with war what's interesting is uh, and I'll let you take a look at this Diana Alibieri uh, had posted a video on July 10th 2017 and the video title is 8-1 is 7-1 very important uh, this was at a time where we were all you know we were all understanding that this shift had happened so I'm going to uh, show you that video real quick. Hi guys, thanks for coming back to the next video. Um, I wanted to continue sharing information that the Lord gave me on July the 8th, 2017. That was a night that I received five dreams from him. Um, this is the second dream that I am sharing. And the information that I received on this dream, I received it in the same manner that I received the South Pacific information. Um, through a dream state, um, I was downloaded this information. What was given to me is this right here. 8 1 is 7 1. 8 1 is 7 1. And I knew it was in regards to dates, and I knew it dealt with calendars and time. And as I was pondering over this information that was given to me, I truly understood at that particular moment. It is true. The calendars are one month off. The Lord said, 8-1 is 7-1, okay? Now, I'm... Okay, I'll pause that. Uh, what she's pointing out is that shift. And, uh, you know, she feels the Lord had, had confirmed that for her. 
So, you know, I have uh, little notes for myself in here. I was trying to figure out the best way to explain that. To not only explain how July has shifted, or, or I'm sorry, August had shifted back into July, but also September shifted into August. So I put together just a couple pictures. I went to prayer on it and I felt like the Lord just kind of moved me, uh, you know, like a piece of paper kept coming to my mind or how a piece of paper is folded. And, you know, <laughs> I was kind of stumped because, uh, you know, all right, you know, I looked up, you know, here's a piece of paper. And I got to thinking about it and I thought about how, you know, the little brochures are, the trifold brochures. And uh, I think this is the best way to kind of show you how that shift happened. And I put together a, just a little, you know, this is something I put together, nothing special. I, I found it interesting that it says 3, 2, 1. It's almost like a countdown. This is July right here. And you can see August is right here in the bend. We know that August has folded into July. And what happens with September? It folds right back over top of them both, right? It's folding right back, back to back with August. That's the uh, absolute best way I could come up with, uh, you know, on how to describe that. I'd also like to note, uh, it's very interesting when you look at Daniel 7.25. And you go down to the part, and I'll go ahead and read it. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Uh, what I'm going to be able to show you with all this, obviously you see that uh, August folds into July and September folds into August. So, uh, you know, that is the time and times. And the dividing of time uh, gets a bit into, uh, you know, some of the things that, that you know, I'm going to do in a second video. It has to do with CERN, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are seeing the eight, or double eights, or even triple. Uh, this is also associated with the infinity symbol. So, we're going to go over that in the second video, but I wanted to point that out. Another thing I, uh, I want to point out before I share this uh, next little quick video. Um, what I've been able to do on this channel... And it's really hard to, under, you know, to explain the process. But, uh, you know, I go to these other channels and, uh, and, and I do appreciate the work that all these channels are doing. Uh, you know, even the guys that uh, are, you know, hung up on, you know, 923 and this Revelation 12 sign happening in September. I appreciate their work. Uh, you know, I'm going to show here in this video where, uh, you know, that that's incorrect. But they're seeking they're trying to uh, to seek out the truth, and and that's what the Lord requires. Uh, you know, the the bride is uh, is those that are seeking Him, that are expecting His return. So, uh, I guess where I was going, uh, you know, it it uh, I'm able to go to these other channels, and I get these little nuggets, you know, I don't agree with everything that's said in, in some of these videos that I share, you know, from other people's channels, but it's the little nuggets, and I feel like, you know, that's what the Holy Spirit leads me, you know, I'm able to kind of grab those and put it together like a puzzle. And, uh, Soldier of God, a YouTube channel, posted a video uh, August 10th, just a couple days ago, 2017. And the title of the video is, And So It Begins, The End Times, Past Five Days, August 6th through 10th, 2017, HD, Christian News. And I, I put a little note here to remind myself it is at 
the uh, 5.05 time marker. Interesting uh, what you hear here as far as the harvest. It's just a little nugget. and It's just me showing you how the Holy Spirit is able to pull these, these things out. And uh, it starts here. In the form of blocks of ice in Italy, where authorities in two dozen cities issued weather risk warnings, the wine harvest started weeks early because grapes ripened so quickly. In Did you hear that? The wine harvest started weeks early because the grapes, you know, due to the heat. The heat wave they're having over there, I don't know if you noticed, they're calling it Lucifer. So the harvest came weeks early. I would uh, argue that uh, a month early is what we're going to see as far as the harvest. I'm going to jump down. You know, on the Revelation 12 sign, you know, and everybody as far as September uh, 23rd, I need to point out that, uh, you know, this scripture. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall be no sign given unto it, but the sign of Jonah, the prophet. Now, those of us, you know, have done the research and know that there was an eclipse that happened, you know, in the times of Jonah, you know, before he was in, uh, you know, was able to go in, you know, to this area and uh, uh, save, you know, or help get a bunch of people to come to Christ, I guess would be a better way to put it. The other thing I want to point out before I dive into this is we see, you know, and here is the Revelation 12, and we already know now that it folds into August. You see, you know, these are all the events, and you can see I've left spaces here, and I'll show you why shortly. Uh, with the eclipse alone, we know that you know, this, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. We know that that sign isn't going to occur in August. Instead, we have the eclipse. And when does that happen? Eight twenty one. Next, I would point out that uh, in part two, or, or I should say, verse two, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. We go up to Isaiah. 66 7 through 9 and God is telling us right here before she travaileth she brought forth before her pain came she was delivered of a man child who had heard of such a thing who had seen such things shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day I want to kind of zone in on those, or at least keep that in your mind. So we know that 2, verse 2, is not accurate. Because he's telling us right here. Before she travaila. Before she's in pain. So we're going to bring this down. I know this is probably disturbing to some. But uh, it's important to understand. Also, you know, if you recall the second vision, I was rem reminded to uh, to remember two, three, four. These, and I'm going to uh, kind of break it down here. And I'll just bring these down. Two, three, four. It's the three days of darkness. 
remember 234. Remember in my first vision, you know, at the end, after I'd, I'd looked at the eclipse, before, you know, uh, we, seen, we ran to the barn, I seen the darkness coming across the sky. It was covering everything above and below. And when I say darkness, I don't mean it just uh, went dark. I mean darkness that uh, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face that dark. So, uh, you know, I want to point out, you know, that uh, the powers that be, you know, in the world, are they know this is coming. You know, this can uh, discredit, you know, anybody that says that, uh, you know, as far as uh, rapture, that only God knows, that uh, not even the sun. Uh, you hear a lot of people throwing that around. Uh, you're going to find the next video quite interesting. And it's from Truth Unveiled 777 YouTube channel. The video was posted yesterday, August 11th, 2017. The video title is Huge Nationwide Emergency Exercise on the Same Week as the, the Total Solar Eclipse. And I'm going to preface this a little bit just by letting you know that... Uh, uh, the part, uh, it's actually uh, titled Dark Skies, you know. They know what is going to happen, you know, on this 234. It, it, uh, it, they're also talking about in this drill, and I've, I've seen on some other channels, I don't know if she'll cover it in this video, that they're concerned about the, uh, the satellites. All the satellites, you know, on account of the solar eclipse falling from the, the sky. And uh, what does that put you in the mind of? Right? I'm sorry. I should go up here. Three and four. Put you in the mind of that. And there appeared in heaven another woman in heaven. A wonder in heaven. Sorry. I told you I am punchy at this point. Behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon its head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars, and did cast them to the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now understand that this would be eight, twenty-two, eight... 23 and 8 24 and as I said three days of darkness I'm going to show you the truth unveiled video and this is what the people here the elite the uh, those that are in, in control here are preparing for and you see how it coincides be just a second here we go you're going to find this very interesting. Wow. Let me pause. I'm going to have to refresh this. Okay, guys. I got the uh, the video ready to go. Uh, keep this in mind, too. When I say the three days of darkness, uh, you know, in my vision, I seen the darkness, you know, just taking over the earth, covering everything. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that that is what we will physically see I'm saying that uh, you know bad things are going to happen in these three days and uh, I would recommend that uh, you know people have supplies I think uh, Diane Alivari I know I keep messing up her name I apologize for that Diane uh, she had done some videos on uh, candles you know different types of candles that uh, may work and uh, she had also pointed out that she was shown that uh, uh, we don't have to worry about you know the light in our house that uh, those of us that are, are that are in Christ the body uh, you know he will be the light of our homes I found that really interesting but uh, let's get back to this video here this is showing uh, you know how the elite or the powers that be in this world are kind of preparing you for this three days of darkness Notice that they're preparing you for it uh, 
on 8-23, not 9-23. This drill starts uh, two days after the eclipse. Here it is. What I really wanted to bring to your attention in this video isn't even so much the eclipse itself, but rather what happens two days later in the emergency scenario that's going to be taking place. And it's known as Earth X 2017 by the EIS Council, and this will be taking place two days later as of 8 23, 2017. And we'll be going over this more in detail, but before we do, note how this will take place as of 8-23-2017. Note the date and how this is exactly a month following the Michelangelo exhibit that was on display in New York for an entire month where it left and remained for a month there at the Oculus as of 6 2017 all the way up until 7 2017 with the painting featuring Last Judgment and I also talked about that in my video which I'll link in the description box below having to do with Last Judgment in America literally. And then after New York City, the Michelangelo exhibit will then head to New Jersey where it will be in Paramus for another month and a half starting as of September 1st all the way up until October 15th. And right on time, what perfect timing for this event to go on too because they'll be hosting this emergency scenario exactly one month before the Revelation 12 sign and the star alignment as of September 23rd, 2017. And note all of the 23s and what happens when you add up 9-11-2001. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. And did I mention how this will also be a week before FEMA's National Preparedness Month, which is in September, by the way, and we'll be going over more of that later on in the video to come. Now here's more about the company that's hosting this. The EIS, or the Electric Infrastructure Security Council, is addressing severe hazards to critical societal infrastructures. And the EIS Council facilitates national and international collaboration and planning to protect our society's critical utilities against uniquely severe black sky hazards. And we're going to be seeing exactly their definition of black sky hazards. Our programming and special projects help utilities and their partners develop and implement cost-effective, consensus-based protection measures by hosting frameworks for sustained coordination, planning, and best practice development. And so what is a black sky hazard? It is a catastrophic event that severely disrupts the normal functioning of our critical infrastructures in multiple regions for long duration. So what are they getting ready for? Power outages nationwide. And that is the drill that they're getting ready for. And they say that the man-made hazards includes an EMP, which we know our government's been getting ready for, and an IEMI, which is an intentional electromagnetic interference. And you'll see other organizations involved with this and this drill that's going to take place two days after the eclipse by the way ones including FEMA and the DOE and the DHS more alphabet soups very interesting and suspicious indeed now other hazards that I keep in mind uh, you know which what they're planning for is a power outage so uh, you know that may very well play into uh, you know, this three days of darkness, you know, we might, you know, be in an EMP or uh, we all know what, what has happened in the past when they run these drills. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, when 9-11-01, uh, when the towers were hit, they were actually running drills at the same time. Uh, Sandy Hook, they were running drills at the same time that they say the event occurred. This really is uh, disturbing. Okay, guys, I uh, I hope you're ready for the finale here. I've kind of backed it up a little bit to 8:20, right the day before the eclipse, and I put uh, emphasis on the moon because the moon is the bride. Remember, Michael is represented as Mars, the moon as the bride, the sun is represented as Christ, and he's already in Leo, which is the, the king constellation. And then you've got Gabriel down here, just kind of hanging out, waiting. 
So when I, I push forward to uh, the day of the eclipse, 821, now you see the moon still right here, this black dot. But it's not centered up just right. It's kind of down here uh, to about the 7 o'clock position or towards that. If I adjust the time here, and this is going to catch a bunch of you off guard, so I want to prepare you ahead of time. Take it down to 11. I'm going to take the minute marks. All the way down to 11. How many of you have seen 1111? And for how long and how many years were you kind of flooded with 1111? Now, this is on the day of the eclipse. The only time that the moon, the bride, lines up perfectly with Christ, the sun. It's during the eclipse at 11.11. Very interesting. I want to point out the... Uh, I go back to my little cheat sheet here. Notice I've changed these all to dates. 8.21 is the eclipse. Messed up here, right? 822, 823, 820, oops, 24, and so on. Uh, I even went ahead and, uh, guess I forgot to put the twos on all of them. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm completely exhausted, but we're, we're at the end here. Uh, these are dates. These events are going to happen on these dates. You know, you have your three days of darkness. But we're right here. We're, we're at 821. And remember here, 822, you know, from the uh, Isaiah 66, 7, 8, and 9 scripture. Before she travaileth, she brought forth. Before her pain, she was delivered of a man-child. And I'll take you up and show you something interesting. It comes right after that. And I think it is verse 8 of the old Isaiah 66, 7 through 9 scripture. Who had seen such things shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day. Remember that. One day. It's going back to Stellarium here. We have the eclipse, we got Mars, we've got Gabriel here, Michael is up here, standing, guard, and we've got the bride in Christ, connected at 11.11. Now let me move this up to the 22nd. Now you notice the moon, the bride, is still in Leo with Christ. Michael is still standing guard and Gabriel is right here to the right of the bride. Now you go down to 823. You see that uh, the sun remains you know in Leo the king star. This is his throne. This is Christ. Mercury's popping out. Gabriel here. Go down to the 24th, you see the moon on, on the 23rd, before I jump too far ahead, it's still, you know, just now entering Virgo, on the 24th. Now this is that scripture that I just pointed out to you, that I want to point out to you again. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? On the 24th, to the 25th. Watch what happens with the moon. It goes from uh, just under the 
the uh, Virgo sign's breast on the 24th. And see it? It is outside the womb. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travaileth, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth, and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth, and shut the womb, saith the Lord? Now you can see that it doesn't line up just perfect with Jupiter. But if you take the time, keep it on the screen here, to 8, 8. It's in perfect alignment. Now I understand, uh, you know, they're showing you you know, NASA, of all people, to trust. It's showing you, and they're blocking out this picture of the dragon, you know, that's already setting, you know, at the feet of the woman. And she's waiting to devour the child. He's already there. He knows this date. He knows that it isn't 923. It's 825. 88. A lot of people have, have been seeing a triple eights, double eights, and as I said, I'm going to go over this, uh, you know, and the infinity symbol a bit more in the next video. I want to focus on these events right here. But you notice at 8-8, eight, eight, there's a perfect alignment. And you go back to the, you know, scripture. And what happens after that? Now we know on 825, she brought forth a man-child, and who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. It's on 825, that's this date. Jesus is right here, in Leo, the king star, on his throne. This is on 825. Notice it lines up perfectly. Eight twenty five. She brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now what happens on eight twenty six seventeen? And the woman, the bride, fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, three and a half years. <laughs> this is going to get you. And uh, I can feel the spirit all over me as I'm about to show what happens here. Let me pause so I can line it up. Okay, guys. You see, we are still on 825. The bride has just been birthed. And I really, I have to go back and, uh, and this is where it always kind of messes up how I can grab. Just want to reiterate. That it happened on 8 8. You see, it kind of twisted everything up on me again. I get so aggravated with Stellarium. 8 8. We see. Perfect alignment. Let me pause again and realign this for what's coming on 8 26. Okay, guys. Still here. 8 25. We see that the bride has just been birthed. And we know, you know, in the next scripture from my little uh, cheat sheet, that the bride will go into the wilderness from there. Now notice what happens 
when we go to 826. See, it's a little off, right? The moon's not quite at the feet, but see how everything else is lined up? And you've got the 12 stars, you know, for, for the crown. That talks about in the Revelation 9.23. Let me adjust this date. This is going to blow your mind. Take it up to the 23rd hour. At the ninth minute. And I need to pause this. It's 9.23 backwards. Ah, uh, yeah. You see what I go through. So what happens? Are you seeing the alignment? On 8.26, the 23rd hour and 9th minute, 9.23 backwards, you have the sign. There's Mercury. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, the, uh, the sun's not at her shoulder. It didn't say, it never said in, that, in the original 9.23 Revelation 12 sign that the sun was at her shoulder. It said that she would clothe and the sun. And you can see the sun stepping out of Leo. This is Christ clothing Virgo. Everything's in perfect alignment. 826, 2017, 23rd hour, 9th minute. You have the Revelation 12 alignment. And the moon is in the wilderness the bride at her feet. If you're anything like me, it's going to take a couple minutes to let that soak in and really go back and, uh, and go over this material. It, uh, <laughs> it's a lot to take in. I want to point something else out that, uh, Just last night, Diane Aliaveri, and I, I, I pray I'm saying that name right, she's uh, if i <laughs> fortunate enough to see her in the hereafter, she's probably going to punch me. But here we go. I want to pull up my cheat sheet again. I guess we can have Stellarium here in the background. She had put out a video uh, just last night. I watched it. And I found it very interesting. I always, uh, you know, like I said, I'd, somebody could put out a video and I don't, I don't take everything in. But I take out of it what I need. I get those little nuggets that I feel the Holy Spirit moves me. Uh, you know, and, it, and it's my spirit. The Holy Spirit in me being uh, in agreement with the spirit, you know, the person that, uh, you know, is showing the material. And I get that a lot with Diana. And I really appreciate her work. I know she's doing great things. Uh, Rhonda Emerson, wonderful lady, doing great things for the Lord. Uh, I could sit here and name a bunch of them, and I, I'd be here forever. But uh, anyway, she had this video last night. It's posted August 11, 2017. In the video, she's titled, Are We Being Shown the Dead in Christ Are About to Rise? I want to show you a little clip from that video. Uh, just so you can kind of uh, see the connection. And, and I think this will really be kind of neat for her uh, if she gets to see this video. And so I then realized that the far-reaching document, because the Lord gave me a dream, and I went in and, and then he gave me a vision. And I went in and did a study, and I had some information um, that was given to me um, back uh, last year and it was called I, I named it the far reaching uh, I am far reaching and that that's the document that I'm talking about and that's the one that I it's this one and that's the one that I thought I saw um, that's the one that I thought I saw in my 
dream, except that it was way back, and I couldn't really make out, you know, I couldn't quite make out what it said, but somehow I saw the date, 8-13-17. And so, um, and so I, I am realizing that this document, um, it deals with people getting out of hell and getting, and getting, breaking out of prison down there. That's what this document deals about. And, um, um, it, it, we'll talk about this document in a minute. But now, um, when I thought about this document and all of this study that I went into in regards to, um, people coming out of hell, people being broken out of prison and um, things of that nature. Now we know that when they're there, they're already dead. They already passed away physically, right? They're, they're not here anymore. And so when the Lord made me realize that it was this document, okay? When I started thinking about what this document represents and I understood what this study was talking about, I, I then was just like, oh my gosh, is the Lord showing me that the dead in Christ are going to rise? Is the Lord pointing out to me in my vision and through this document and what all he was trying to show me, is he trying to show me that the dead in Christ are going to rise? Is it on this date of 813? We're going to talk about that. Pretty interesting, right? When you go back to, uh, you know, and we're looking, you know, at this alignment, the Revelation 12 sign alignment, right here, on 826, at the 23rd hour and ninth minute. I find it interesting, and, and, and it's just a little nugget I got out of, out of her video, and it was a great video. It was two hours long, just last night. She felt like she was giving that date, you know, on 8-13, you know, as the day that the dead in Christ were rise. I just find it interesting that, you know, on 826, just 13 days later, exactly, is when we have this uh, alignment, the Revelation 12 alignment, right here on 826. <laughs> I can't get past the, uh, the 23rd hour and the ninth minute. It just amazes me. Uh, this has been a tough, tough road uh, getting to this point. I can tell you that uh, I failed more often than not. Oh, there's Venus. I really pointed that out. Uh, so many roadblocks and so many things I, I came up against. And uh, I thought to myself, uh, you know, and a lot of it's just carnal thinking not uh, not following what the lord you know was trying to show me in spirit but uh, relying on on man or or my own mind my own carnal mind uh <laughs> i had this thought in my mind and i know i've said it to uh my friend pam uh, from the channel she she's been a very instrumental part in all this she's kind of my sounding board on all this material and, and has been for really since the fall of last year such a wonderful woman and she deserves a lot of uh, a lot of credit I don't know why I'm getting emotional but uh I always tell her you know if uh I'm fortunate enough to stand you know with with Jesus one day I'm pretty certain he's gonna smack me in the head <laughs> I, what comes to mind is uh, you know Fred Sanford you know you big dummy that's really uh, 
<laughs> what comes to mind and, and and how he's he's really trying to show me everything and he, he lays it out so perfectly but uh, I can fumble it up more often than not I do and have uh, I've stumbled on every vision he's ever given me and it's just been a three here I uh, I want to kind of finish and, and just point out that, uh, you know, I know there's there's going to be scoffers. There's going to be people that are going to come against this. But here it is right in front of you. Uh, you know, go to Stellarium. Put it all together yourself. Don't take my word on it. Don't follow man. Follow the Lord and let him bring you into all truths. I, uh... I don't know really what what else to say I mean other than uh, those of you you know that have been seeking and searching and and uh, some of them have been tossing around these scriptures uh, you know uh, Diana she's uh, done a whole video that focused on Isaiah 66 7 through 9 you know which was very prevalent in that video a lot of things that she has shown has really stuck you know with me and I know it you know it's pieces of that puzzle you know that I needed to get and we we all provide that for each other I, you know I don't know how many times the people you know the people on the channel on my channel uh, just give me pieces to the puzzle you know in their comments and uh, it's beautiful we are the body we all work together you know to bring each other you know into all truths and all comfort you know it, uh, here it is, all of it right in front of you, and I hope that, you know, I'm, with this video, I'm able to, to fill in some blanks for a lot of those that have been searching, but I'm, I'm mainly hoping that, uh, those that, uh, you know, are following, you know, and, and arguing the Revelation 12 sign, you know, being in September. You know, it uh, it isn't that you were wrong. September folded into August, so uh, you know it's it's this is this video wasn't made to to uh, poke fun or or point out where you were wrong. It's not that you were wrong. You know, it just folded into August, just as August folded into July. I think. Uh, the people that uh, you know and Scotty Clark he's done a lot of great work and you've got to uh, acknowledge that uh, he's he's done a lot of good work for the Lord and uh, you know people are real quick to throw out words you know like false prophet I don't know how many times I've been called a false prophet I've countered you know many times saying you know in order for me to be a false prophet I would have to be a prophet and I've never claimed that, never once. And I'm a bit leery of anybody that does. But here it is, cut and dry. I uh, I hope you guys can see it. And I hope it shows you what's coming. And uh, you know, for those that you know, lukewarm, or you're just sitting back and you're thinking you have until September to get it together, and. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm showing you, you do not. It's sneaking up on you. And I have a feeling before the eclipse, we're going to see uh, events come about. We're going to see things. Uh, you're going to notice changes. You know, uh, Diana done some good work on that video last night. I highly recommend you go and, and check it out. About the earth quaking. You know, all these things that are about to happen, we're going to experience that. We also see what's going on, you know, with uh, China. And uh, I sh really, I should say North Korea and Trump. And, uh, you know, we're basically at the point of uh, war or nuclear war. So, you know, whether or not those events will come to fruition at all or before all of this, I don't know. But, uh, you know, all I can go on is what I've been shown and what I'm showing you here. Get right with the Lord. 
if you haven't already. And if you have, get ready. We're getting ready to go. I love you all. And uh, I pray that you, you love each other as Christ loves you. This is the only new commandment that he added, was that you love one another as he has loved you. Lift each other up in prayer to the Father daily. God bless you.